Brother Mark? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> praise God. Don't worry, there's something me and Brother Mark are doing, so just between the two of us. Praise the Lord. Turn your Bibles to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Uh, we just read the first two verses, but of course we'll read other uh, uh, scriptures as well. And I just want to build on what, um, where I left last time I ministered, on in the world, but not of the world. So, are we, are we, are we there? Yeah, so Romans chapter 12, the first two verses. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Father in heaven, we are grateful, Lord, that we can sit under the authority of your word. We are privileged. We are so blessed. So, Father, I pray that let this word, Lord, breathed upon by your spirit, reach and have entrance to the hearts of your people. And it may build their faith, may encourage them, edify them to become that man of God, that woman of God, that son and daughter of God, that God you desire us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So the Bible says, um, I want to focus on verse 2, which says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? I mean, it's not necessarily part of my main emphasis on my preaching, but you can see that having a renewed mind puts you in a place to understand God's will better. Amen. Amen. A lot of confusion about people uh, being confused about what the will of God is and this and this and this is simply because the mind is not renewed. It's crocked up with so many stuff. Mm -hmm. So there, there in there is one advantage why we need <laughs> to desire this. Amen. Yes. It just makes that channel. We will be encouraged about hearing God and you know, you know, speaking to God and things like that. But right there is the key. Instead of a renewed mind, is a mind that will understand the will of God and there are stages of God's will. There is the good and there is acceptable and the perfect will of God. Probably leave that to you know who. <laughs> to go and go, go into the Greek and, and bring all that, you know, the good and, 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 and the acceptable and the perfect will of God from the Greek point of view. Yeah, man. Man, I've studied enough engineering for me to go back and begin to study Greek. So I, I think <laughs> I'll let him that God has used to, to study these things already Amen. to bring them out. Beloved, you should come to discipleship class. And at the moment we're doing a topic that I really like so much, the atonement. You know, you know just come and, and, and be refreshed in this knowledge. You know, he doesn't, you know, boast to say he knows more than anybody or or, you know, I know this. And he just brings the things that God has, you know, uh, you know, uh, blessed him you know, in, the, in his past life to study, spend time on these things. You don't have to go through that same time he spent. Amen. He's already done it. So you just come and learn. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay, so, so come. And to disciples of Christ, just once a month, you know. So, the Bible says, you know, do not be conformed to this word. Now, the world, as we saw a few weeks ago, the world represents limitations. Amen? The world is a place of limitations because the world is, is natural. Uh, it's a place, it's an environment that is subject to natural laws. It's a physical environment. Okay? 
is subject to systems. Uh, and that's the reason why, you know, the world has limitations. Time is a limitation. Amen. You know? You know, it can you know, the world can certain things in the world can't just keep going and going and going and going and going. They are boundaries. So the world is anonymous with limitations. And the Bible says, do not be conformed. Can you just move the air quality bit on this? Do not be conformed to this world. Now, that word, do not be conformed, simply means do not be a subject of these world limitations. Amen. Do not allow the world to shape your behavior, to shape your character, to shape your, uh, you know, your life. Do not be. Now, if you look at this verse, and then we go back to the verse that we looked at in John chapter 15 and 19, where Jesus says, you are in this world, but not of this world, and in John chapter 17 as well, you see that these two are, you know, they, they are validating each other. Do not be conformed to this world. So, by implication, Paul is saying, we are in this world, mm. but do you not be conformed to this world? Amen. He's not saying you are not in this world. Mm -hmm. You are in this world. However, don't be conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus said. Father, I do not pray that you take them out of this world, but I will be, keep them in this world. In chapter 15, where he says that this world will hate you because they hated me. You are in this world, but you are out of this world. And for that reason, they will hate you, he said. So, being out of this world will attract some enmity over your life and this world. Being in this world or being conformed to this world means you become the friend of the world. Mm. And when you do that, you should always remember this. World represents limitations, boundaries. And therefore, when you conform yourself to this world, you are simply saying, I'm accepting to be limited. Mm. Because that's the law of this world. You can't change it. Mm -hmm. It's just like that. Anything that is physical, natural, as a matter of principle, will be subject, affected by the system of the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's not strange that I said last time, it's not strange that if you catch a, you catch a virus or bacteria, you feel unwell. It's just the system of the world. Why? Because this body here, this flesh, is natural. So this is subject to the systems of the world. Mm. <coughs> Amen. 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 So there's a price to pay. If you, if you stay conformed to the world, I understand you can't escape limitations, boundaries, and all these systems. You can't escape them. It's a law. It's a principle. It's like gravity. If you jump up down, you come down. So if you conform to the world, you can't escape these systems, these boundaries. So, that's an important part to understand. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes Christians, we forget this important thing. It's not even theology, it's not, it's just a, the truth. It's the, it's the doctrine of truth. That man has three parts. The spirit, the soul, and the body. And there's always a, stat there's a statement we say to say, you are a spirit, you know, you have a soul, and 
You live in a boy. Man is like a couple of me, they say. To use a bigger word. Trying to be like the giant. I'll come down with you. I'll use simple language. Man has three parts. <laughs> three parts. The spirit, the soul, which is the mind, and the body. Amen. Yeah. So we should always remember this. And many Christians sometimes we forget that the real us out of these three is the spirit. The spirit man. Amen. It's the spirit. And that's why, um, you know, let, let's turn to um, uh, second uh, Corinthians chapter uh, chapter 5 verse 17. We know that scripture very well. So I'm from discipleship class. If any man he is in Christ. He is a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And I like the way it was said in the home group. You know, I don't know where the old has gone. <laughs> I don't know. But, but the, the, the Bible says it's passed away and the new has come. That's a spirit you. The spirit you has been recreated. The old has gone. And the new you has come. Amen. Amen. So that's the spirit you. Part of you. The spirit you. Now, there is also the mind you. The soul you. This is the part that represents your spiritual growth. When you begin to grow spiritually, this is the part that needs to change. And that's the reason why Paul spends a lot of time preaching about this. And this is the, the out of the world bit of it. This is the out of the world bit of it. It represents your spiritual growth. And, and, and that growth takes the form of your mind being renewed. And your mind is a spirit as well. The Bible says the spirit of your mind. Mm. Praise the Lord. And then we have the body. I mean, you, you can tend to the, the you know you know Romans chapter twelve verse uh, verse two. That's the one that talks about the mind that you've just read. He says by the renewing of your mind. And every version that we have in here, you will see that word renewing is a continuous tense. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your soul has been recreated once and for all. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, your spirit, sorry, your spirit became recreated. You've been justified. And then you begin to go through a process of sanctification. The Bible says the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed, not by the renewed mind, by the renewing of your mind. So that we, it's something that we, we must keep on, keep on, and I'll tell you how we do it. Of course, it's by the word of God. And that's why you talk about we must be in the word. Because this is the word that renews our mind. We could be renewed. And this is the, remember last time, you know, I ended up with saying the good news from Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. The Bible says, and he has appointed some to be apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. To do what? To prepare us, the body of Christ, the man of God, to that maturity until we attain that 
image of God, the statue of Christ, mm. until it's a process that we go through. But we must do certain things. This mind here doesn't just automatically get renewed just because you're giving your life to Jesus. Mm. No. Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says it doesn't happen that way. It's a process we've got to go through. ING. English is not my mother tongue. But I have come to study that when you see something, a verb ending with ING, it means it's a continuous term. We must keep on it by the renewing of your mind. And then we have the other part. The body, this. The Bible calls it an earthly house. Mm. Earthly what? House. What does earth mean? The world. Yeah. This, beloved, is the world sink. And that's why it is subject and vulnerable to limitations of this world. Because it's an earthly thing, the body. It's earthly. Up until the day when it's put on, you know, the imperishable. Amen. But up until then, this is subject to the systems of the world. Amen. And that in becomes the conflict. You, have, you are the spirit of God. In you, you are a spirit recreated. And you have a mind. And then you, have, you, you are in this body that is subject to the boundaries, limitations of this world. Sickness is a limitation. Amen. Lack is a limitation. Amen. All these things. But that's the way the world is. But there is something God is telling us here, as we saw last time, that even though we are in this world, that operates with all these boundaries and stuff, we are not of this world. Mm. And that's the emphasis. That's where God is trying to get us to understand, to class. Because we all know when you are limited, you can't do much. And Christianity is about doing something. Yes. Christianity is a movement. Yes. It's not a stagnated something. It's a movement. We're moving. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. We're not stagnant. We're always roaring and moving. Amen. Amen. So this fresh is <laughs> it conflicts. Now, how do we then handle these things? Because we've got a part of us that is in this world. Mm. Its makeup is of this world. But we, the real us, the real us. It's not of this world. Yeah. This is where this, somebody said this, I'm just, you know, physically, just yeah. comes in. The renewing of this comes in. Simply because your spirit is recreated, who will not automatically cause your flesh to behave a certain way. There's something you've got to do, and that battle is in the mind. It is the renewing of the mind that pilgrims us from in this world into the out of this world. Mm. Amen. It's the renewing of the mind. Now, can we see the importance of having our minds continuously being renewed? Mm. If your mind stops being renewed, this puts you back. Yeah. Then your Bible still. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eight. You, you, you must read Second Corinthians chapter four, the whole chapter. To understand how we talk about the body and, and the spirit. So second second Corinthians chapter four, this is how Paul puts it. Is somebody there? Somebody read it for me, please. Second Corinthians chapter four. 
Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced, renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. That's true. But by the open statement is it, is of the truth. Is that, is that, I need, I need, I need, uh, yeah, that's it. Oh, just that's it, okay, sorry. Yeah. We are afflicted in every way, but Ooh. not crushed. That's true. Huh? Yeah, you're right. It's your right. Yeah, that's the best. That's the best. Uh, the God of this age. Okay, let, let's, let's. I think before we go to that one, let's read uh, 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 First Corinthians chapter nine, verse verse twenty-seven first, nice. and then I'll go to that, and then I'll, I'll explain that in a, in, a, in a bit. If we have sown spiritual things among you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 27. <laughs> <laughs> but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Amen. Has somebody got another vision? This is read all the visions. I bring, somebody says, I bring my body under subjection. But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Okay. Now I want you to notice something here. You notice that Paul, right from this scripture, Paul is alerting us to the fact that we are not just one part. We are not just one part. Because if you were just the body, Paul would have said, I discipline myself. Mm -hmm. And I bring myself under subjection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what he would have said. Mm -hmm. if, if man was just the body, that's what he would have said. He yeah. says, I discipline myself. I bring myself under subjection. But he says, no. He says, I bring the body under subjection. So who's this I? Mm. I is the spirit you bringing this body under subjection. Mm -hmm. And the reason why Paul would be telling us this is because he's noticed or Paul knows that if we don't do this, this body has a tendency, a tendency to pull us in a direction God does not want us to go. Yeah. That's the reason why he says, I have to subject. Bring this body under subjection. I've got to discipline this body. The new I, the spirit, has got to bring this body under subjection. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, if you don't control it, trouble. And you know what the, what the trouble will be? You can't escape the law of this world. This body is subject to this world. Mm. So if you don't bring it under subjection, you have no control about the systems of this world. It will lead you into things of the world, of the flesh, and everything. Yeah. Because that's how the world works. Somebody says, once you can't stop the birds from flying in, you know, above us, but at least you can stop it from building it. Bring a nest on your head. Mm. There's something you can do to your body. Because the body is in this world. You want to control it. It's like a car. A car that's moving, if you let go of the wheel, it doesn't matter whether it's a Mercedes Benz, you know, these cars that, you know, they're automatic, they're self-driven, there's nothing like that. If you let go of the wheel, eventually, it will veer off the road. You've got to bring it under control. But when you pack it, you don't need to control it. It's packed. So we must bring this body under subjection. How? By the renewing, there's something in between. The renewing of the mind. That's why the battle is. Paul is not saying, you know, you go out there and cut yourself and, you know, and, and kick things out, you know, you end up in hospital, you end up in E. <laughs> you know, oh, you know, people, people lose their temper. People got very bad tempers. 
no, they kick. I watch football a lot. I saw these managers when they lose a game or <laughs> something happened, they're not happy about what the referee does. They kick something and then they end up, oh, okay. yes. But why did you do that? You know? Amen. That's not what it means. There's something we've got to do to bring this body that has all the tendency of being in this world because it's just like that. Mm. It's not redeemed. Mm. It's vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But you are not this. Yes. You are a spirit. Mm. And you have a mind that being renewed by the word of God, then you bring this body mm. under subjection. Yes. We can't just live like we are bodily beings. Mm. And you go make Christians in the body of Christ that live like that. No. You are a spirit. And that's why Jesus would say, you are in this world, but not of this world. Only that that is spiritual can be out of this world when they are in the world. Yes. That's why God wants us to be. Amen. In that realm. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. I have a soul. I and I live in the body. The but the real, me the real me is the spirit. Is the spirit. Do you understand that, my neighbor? Amen. Tell them. <laughs> Do you get that? <laughs> yeah. I know you can see me. <laughs> Come on, talk to them. Talk to them. Say, I know you can see me. You can even touch me. <laughs> but guess what? Or oh, believe what? The real me is a spirit. <laughs> so it's the same thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Paul shows us the same thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8. Somebody there? 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8. We are troubled at every side, yet not distressed. Mm -hmm. We are perplexed, mm -hmm. but not, not in despair. Mm -hmm. You see, when you read... Uh, the, the episodes of Paul, you must be careful. That's why sometimes Greek is a good thing. You must be careful. That word we, Paul changes that word. Sometimes when he says we, he's talking about the spirit. When he says we, he's talking about the body. Yes. But when you see, you know, I've got this big, called the, the Drake Bible thing, you know, in our bedroom, you know. And my, wife, my wife knows when I take that one thing out, and then she knows I'm searching for something. Because it's got all these little things and subscripts and letters and it goes to some Greek and you know and you look at that word. So when we read the episodes of Paul we must be careful. So when he says we you can see what what's being hard pressed there. It's the flesh. The flesh. So that we there Paul is talking about is not his spirit being. Because why do I say that? Because if we were only body, Paul would have said, Oh man, I'm being hard pressed. Mm. Oh I am being distressed. Ah, oh, I am being destroyed right now. That's what he would have said. But he says, we are being hard pressed, but not destroyed. Though this is being hard pressed by the in the world, by the real you, is not being controlled by this hard press. You are still operating in, an, in, in, in that place where you can't be destroyed. Mm. Amen. Are we together? Amen. So we, we are hungry, <laughs> but we will not faint. Yes. It's the same thing that happened. The temptation of Jesus was all about demonstrating being in the world, but not of this world. Mm. He was tempted in the same way we are. Amen. Amen. But, sin. but he did not sin. He was in this world, but not of this world. He became hungry. There are certain times I think I have a fight with my, with my boys. Oh, that you're hungry, you know, you go down the road and they see this red I am thing. <laughs> that you're hungry. Every time they see that you're hungry, all of a sudden. Mm. <laughs> we just ate. We ate before we left home. <laughs> but the only thing they see so much on the highway are services. Everything else yes. doesn't matter. When they see services, services, toilet, clearly. 
Mitäs Petri toi reitti? Because we do get hungry. Jesus felt hungry. But just because you are hungry, that doesn't mean that you should eat. Yes. <laughs> That's just another practical things. Maybe nutrition will tell you that. <clears throat> hungry, hungry, eat, eat, eat. Hungry, hungry, eat, eat. No. This body, <laughs> even practically, we must just control it sometimes. It's not time to eat. You are fasting. Stick with that. The real you wants to fast. So this is struggle, beloved. It's not just with us. Even Paul, everybody has experienced this. Jesus said it. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. It's not just to you and I. Everybody has passed through this. But however, we can have victory over the limitations and the boundaries of this flesh. Amen. Amen. Yes. That's what Jesus was trying to tell us. Amen. And in that prayer, in John chapter 17, it's all about this. Amen. If we, can't, if we can't demonstrate this to this world, then that prayer is ineffective. That's why Jesus said to the Father, don't take them out of this world. Keep them in there so they can demonstrate to this world the very life that I myself demonstrated. I was in this world, but the world could not limit me. Mm. Amen. We just celebrate, we just celebrated Easter. Resurrection is all about that. The devil got it wrong. Yeah. They are holding on to something that they couldn't hold on to. Mm. Man, man, Jesus <laughs> was sinless. You can't, you can't keep somebody who's without sin in bondage. No, yeah. possible. You can't even kill him. No. Hallelujah. Glory he rose. Mm. They put that big stone there. <laughs> Wow. His body is on his wrist again. His body would have, you know, taken on some different form of uh, mm. chemical uh, makeup. Mm. Because he went through a sun and came out. He appeared before the disciples were in the house. Mm. The house was locked. locked. He didn't have to wait for the, the door to be opened. Mm. He just went, he's on the other side. Mm. In the with them. You couldn't just go. This is a life. This is where we are not meant to be. The world is there to trap us. But we are, our makeup is that of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. So we, we must understand that. And, 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 and live with it. So the mind must be renewed. So now going back to Romans Chapter 12, verse 2, and then we'll be closing with this very soon. The Bible says that do not be conformed to this world, but be, be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. So the mind needs to be renewed. How? By the word of God. Mm -hmm. Because scriptures that, that you mm -hmm. look at in, in uh, 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 you can write them down. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 26, Romans 12, 12, the one, 12 2, the one we've just read. Hebrews 4.12 and 2 Corinthians 3.18. We'll look at them again. I'll bring them out in the, in the home group. So that means that all of you should come to the home group. <laughs> Man, yeah. put out more chairs. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, now I want us to, uh, to look at this. Beloved, you know, if you go to Romans chapter 1, and this is the practical bit I want us to get into. Because sometimes we, you know, we encourage people a lot. Read the word of God. We must be in the word. We must read the word. And I think people sometimes, they will put up their hand and say, well, I do this. There are people who read the word of God religiously out there. Probably even more than I do. Okay? But you see, there are certain things that we must understand about this word of God. This is not just a book. Amen. This is not just a book. This is not a dissertation. Brother Ayo, he's not here. Brother Ayo is writing his page dissertation. You remember Ayo? You know, yeah. This is not a dissertation. These are scriptures. Amen. You know, if I gave you my PhD dissertation, which I got, okay, and as long as you you know you apply some bit of effort and you know you you know you give that in a certain way, even though you're not an engineer, 
you are quite likely to understand what I'm talking about. Mm. Okay? I, I, I have understood the things that, you know, I read my wife's reports, the nursing reports, you know. When she was doing nursing, it's like I was also doing nursing. So when she graduated, I said, would you speak to your university also award me? <laughs> award me the nursing degree, please. <laughs> I'm sure you would be able to back me up on this. We've done this together. <laughs> the reason is being because books and dissertations, they are written chronologically, chapter one, Chapter two, follow that. Chapter three, who we'll go into, who we'll, you know, we'll, is the follow up on chapter one and things like that. So if you just read it that way, you're likely to understand the story. But these are scriptures, as we are talking about yesterday. Yeah. These are what scriptures. They are not sequential. Mm. Amen. They are scripts. Amen. Do you know what a script is? They're scripts. So that means to understand this, we must have a certain mindset. Amen. This is not just something that we read religiously. No. This, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, this is the power of God. Even just one script, read with faith and believing, this is the power of God. It's got sufficient power to renew your mind. Amen. You can read my pages hundred times. It won't renew your mind. Mm. You might understand it, but it won't renew your mind. Read just the script from here. Amen. And it has potential Amen. to change it. Amen. How many people want you to have your life changed? Because this is where the problem maybe is. Mm. Maybe you don't want to change. Mm. And that's why this is not changing us. Yeah. This is dangerous. Yes. <laughs> Amen. This will renew your mind. Mm. It's a principle. If you read it and you take it as what it is, it has got enough power to renew your mind. Amen. Amen. I can testify to that. This has changed all the philosophical thinking this young man had before he became a Christian. Mm. Amen. This offended me. Mm. It did offend me. Because I believed everything. I argued. I thought this was nonsense. I argued with my sisters. It called me foolish. It offended me. This, if you are ready to be offended, then you are just about to have your mind renewed. Amen. Romans <laughs> chapter 1 verse 16. I am not what? I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that does what? Believes. So every time, whatever time you read the Bible, whether it's early in the morning, it's in the afternoon, it's in the evening, every time you press this in your hands, it's on your laps. Friends, you are holding in your hand the very power of God Amen. that is able to change your mindset. Amen. This. And that must be the prayer. Because if that's your desire, that your mindset be changed, it will be changed. Amen. Yeah. Please don't read this for the sake of arguments. To go and win an argument mm. with somebody else. You know people read like that? Yes. Jehovah's Witnesses are an example. Mm. They don't read this to, to have their mind renewed. Mm. They are carnal. The most carnal people you ever find who know the Bible. Mm. Their mind is not renewed. Why? They read it so they turn upon your door and have an argument with you. Yeah. And if you want to argue with them, you will lose the argument. Yeah. Just ignore them. Oh, yeah. I've got no time. To prove my knowledge of the Bible with people like that. No. I don't read the Bible. First and foremost, when I hold this in my laps, I'm using my time. When I, I'm using my personal time to hold this in my hands, the first candidate 
that this must change is me. Amen. I don't read this. So I come up and say, hey, brother. Yeah? You know this, you know this scripture and they start quoting things and that's my point. If this doesn't change me first, it can't change anybody else. Amen. Amen. So we are holding right in your hand the power of God. The power of God. We're not being fanatical. No. This is the power of God. Amen. And to salvation. And the Bible says this salvation is not just you going to heaven. The Hebrews calls it the great salvation. It's everything. Yes. This. Let me just wind up this. Second Timothy 3 verse 16. All scripture is what? God breathed. Come on. And is profitable. Yeah. For teaching, reproof, rebuke, equipping, correction, equipping. And you see, the man of God. And you know, in all those things, the only nice word there is teaching. Rebuking, correcting, training is not very, very nice. People don't want to be rebuked. People don't want to be trained. People don't want to be corrected. So every time you hold this, this is how you should, Father God, thank you that this is your very breath. I am ready to be rebuked, to be corrected, to be taught. Come on, somebody. And your mind will be renewed. Don't read this with somebody else in mind. No. Yes. No. This is for you. You are the first protocol for this to change you. Amen. Amen. So if there's an area of your life that this is struggling to change, the problem is not with this. The problem is you are in the flesh and you know, therefore there are boundaries around you and this can't get to you. Amen. You must submit before this because it is God's breath to rebuke you, to correct you, to change you, and to teach you. Mm. Hallelujah. Praise the name. Taco, it's Taco here. Yeah. Your scripture, Hebrews 4.12, come on. You read this scripture every day in the hospital. The word of God is what? Sharper. 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 Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. It divides. He read this scripture every day in the hospital. He spoke to his bone marrow. Hallelujah. Said, Word of God. Mm. Where are the, 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 oh, the scans and everything can't go? Your word, you are sufficient Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. to divide between bone and marrow, soul yeah. and spirit. Mm. This word, when you put it in your hands, it's a Father God, thank you. I'm holding in my hands a very sharp tool mm. to circumcise my mind. Amen. And your mind will be renewed. Amen. Let's read the word of God that way. Amen. And every day it will be renewed. Amen. This word of God in closing, beloved. This word of God does two things. The gospel does two things. The gospel always takes, you know, it becomes indigenous yeah. where we are. Mm. That's why you see, sometimes the reason why we can't evangelize our own communities and things like that, we've misrepresented this. We are arrogant. We think because we are saved, everybody else now is... No. Paul was very sensitive to people's culture, the way people lived, and the things they did. So was Jesus. The Bible says, and the word became fresh, and it dwelled amongst us. This word of God, it defines place in every culture. Amen. Mm. It is in the world. Are we together? Mm. It is in the world. But then the Bible says it's the power of God to do what? To begin to change the mindset of that culture and people begin to be pilgrimed from their own culture. They become exiled. Yes. They become aliens yes. from their own culture. That's right. mm. That's true. You've been a Christian for how many decades and you've never been exiled from your own habits. Mm. Something is wrong. Mm -hmm. right. Because this should. You should stay in the world, but everybody else you will see, you are not out of this, you're not of this world. Mm -hmm. They will begin to see. When I gave my life to Jesus, I want everybody to know physically that I'm saved. And I caused problems. I offended people. That's not the way. 
But then I began to realize that, look, the renewing of your mind, it will change my life. And people just began to see something has happened to this man. We offend, this word should offend your mindset, your culture, but not people. Amen. Amen. Not people. There are many times when Paul in the word of God, maybe we look at it in home group, where Paul said, I do not want to offend anybody. Sometimes you're thinking, so Paul, are you trying to fit in? No, that's not what he's trying to say. Jesus came and dwelt amongst us. But he was not in this world. Mm -hmm. And eventually, his life began to shake that culture. <laughs> it caused a revolution. Yes, sir. And that revolution is what got him arrested. It's the same thing with you. Amen. This word must cause a revolution in your mindset. Amen. Amen. That must happen. It must pilgrim you. Amen. That is our real pilgrimage. I know we are all going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we ask people, no, you know, on what pilgrim? Like, oh, go, you know, by and by, I'm waiting to go to heaven. That's my pilgrim. I understand you are in heaven already. You have eternal life. But there's another pilgrim we are on. The renewing of the mind is a continuous thing. Mm. God has got to take you from this Gentile status into that life. Mm. None of us was born into this culture of God. Mm -mm. We were lost. And that's the reason why we need the renewing of oh, the mind. Right. Stand your feet. Hallelujah. The word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you. The word of God. It changes culture. Hallelujah. Have we ever realized, beloved? <laughs> Let me just say this. Have we ever realized that people have tried to impose their culture on others and it has never worked? Mm. Your ancestors <laughs> came to our culture and they tried, they brought everything, they, 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 they taught us how to drink tea, yeah. make tea, you know, <laughs> <laughs> prophet is getting, <laughs> you know, you know, all those kind of things and, you know, you know, change that, stop that and, you know, you know, you know, how to hold your knife this side and, and that side and all that kind of stuff. People learned for a little bit, but they still went back. <laughs> it's the same thing. You can't cause a Punjabi to be a Gujarati or something like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you can impose it on them for a while, but you not change. <laughs> the only culture that can change any culture on the surface of the earth is this. Amen. Amen. That's why people in Africa can be saved. People in Europe can be saved. People in America can be saved. People in India can be saved. This is the only thing that has got the power. Yes. To yes. change a mindset of his, any culture. Amen. 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 And the pilgrimage. Hallelujah. Anything else, it will never work. Hallelujah. You can colonize, imprison, enslave. Eventually, mm. you just tire. Mm. But this, it comes into a culture. Mm. Yeah. It settles down. It mm. becomes indigenous. Mm. But within it, there is a power of God. Yeah. It's beginning to transform that culture. And all of a sudden, people begin to become alien to their own culture. Yes. They become exiled. Yeah. Yes. What's happening? Right. It's the same thing. These settles on you, it gets into your spirit. And all of a sudden, your mind begins to transform. Yeah. Your mind begins to change. This has power. Amen. 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 Read this by faith. Mm. Believe is the power of God. Mm. Believe it is a breath upon by God mm. to the proof to change, to correct. Mm. Believe it can go right into your deeper thoughts mm. and change your mind. Mm. It will renew you. Mm. And when your mind is renewed, you are transferring from in this world into out of this world. Mm. Because it's that renewed mind that lives outside the limitations of this world. Amen. Raise your hands to heaven. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Let's have the Bible. Hold your Bible in your hands. Your Bible. Let's make this confession. Hallelujah. Hold your Bible in your hands. And every time you begin to read this, 
<laughs> no, you are holding a life changing. It doesn't matter what you're facing. You are holding a life changing power of God. Mm. That will make an assault on your mind mm -hmm. and change your mindset. Whatever character, it doesn't matter how you've been brought up. What kind of habits and things like that? If you read this by faith, believing is the power of God, it's breathed by God, it's sharper than a two-edged sword, and you submit to it, it will change that mindset. Mm -hmm. Everybody say, this is my Bible. This, this is, is my Bible. Bible. And I believe it's the word of God. And I believe, I believe it's the word of God. That it's the power of God. It's the power of God. And to everyone, and to everyone who, believes, who believes, it is breathed upon by, upon by God's Spirit to teach me, to, teach to, me, me, to rebuke me, to, rebuke to, me, correct, to correct me, correct and, and, and to encourage me. This is the word of God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It can go into the deeper thoughts of my mind. It can divide between bone and marrow, between soul and spirit. It can discern my thoughts. It can change the mindset of my mind. In the name of Jesus. So help me God. By every time I did this word, your word, spirit of the living God, brood 